is a great pleasure, Caroline, to welcome you today as Executive Director of the 1020 Foundation for our conversation about investing time in building relationships. In a recent speech, the Rockefeller Foundation CEO said, when I look and pinpoint when philanthropy is at its best, it is almost always the moments when the work is the hardest and the risk of failure is the greatest. I thought that was a fascinating comment mm. and insight into philanthropy. Well, how do you respond to that? Uh, Lizzie, this is, I think, exactly where 1020 sits that we really want to place ourselves in this place where the work's the hardest and the risk's the greatest. Um, and because really the way we see it, markets won't innovate um, in the social sector and governments largely can't. So what we see is that philanthropy can. And for a couple of reasons, I think um, philanthropy, we've got access to uh, networks and our independence really allows us to bring diverse sectors around the table. And secondly, we've got the um, flexibility uh, to adapt our funding and our support so that communities in the system can tackle the tough issues, can learn, can innovate. So, Connie, given that philanthropy has that flexibility mm. and the capacity to leverage those networks and build those collaborations, mm. why is the work so hard? Um, really comes down to our role in um, participating in these hard issues around innovation as a funder really asks us to step in and start to do more than give money. It asks us to actually participate in solving the complex problems alongside a lot of other partners in the work. We have to be um, willing to compromise our work and sometimes not impose our agenda and work with the broader um, goals of the collective. We have to really be up for learning and having the courage to um, try, fail, innovate, reflect and move forward. It actually requires a shift in behaviour and a shift in practice which comes with its own challenges. You've chosen collective impact as the a model that you're seeking to support as yeah. a real catalyst for systems change. Why yeah. collective impact? Yeah, This model, this approach has been around for decades but about five years ago it, it really was um, captured in the States and has got a lot of traction. Collective impact for us, um, we believe, shows the greatest potential to shift outcomes for vulnerable children. It's anchored in the premise that we really uh, feel strongly about, which is that no one individual um, organisation or institution can drive large-scale change on their own. And similarly, um, just adding more money to the issue, adding more programs and trying to work hard is fundamentally not going to change things. What coll Collective Impact's about is acknowledging that what will shift things is when we bring multiple sectors, multiple disciplines, multiple talents and assets together around the one table aligned around a common goal. And that's where we start to see community shifting and outcomes for children shifting. What have been some of the challenges that you've faced as a funder in building those relationships? Great questions, probably one of our greatest points for reflection. Um, relationships, good relationships have to be earned um, and not assumed. So when we are going into community, we need to be invited in and we have to build that trust. Um, and I think a lot of the times, um, when we start, we assume that the relationships will be there and we've had to invest a lot in thinking about how to build this. And what that specifically means is sometimes being prepared to compromise and to not impose your own agenda onto the work. And specifically that might mean um, slowing down and um, delaying an investment that you might think that you would like to make because the community's not ready. And I think a lot of people uh, don't assume that leaders, particularly funders, will be um, comfortable and open about talking about mistakes and failures. But certainly what we've observed is quite um, it, it, the criticality of being authentic in owning the journey and being open and having the courage to say, um, you know, in this case we were reverting back to traditional behaviour, command and control, that didn't work in that situation. Let's be open and talk about reframing that. So, um, Caroline, it's a really interesting point in terms of you as a funder acknowledging that sometimes you have to express the fact that you haven't done something as well as you might have. Mm. Um, but the other really important part of trust, I think, is grantees feeling comfortable about telling you the real story about what's happening on the ground. How are you thinking about trust in the context of things when they don't go well for grantees? What we're really trying to model through our own behaviour and um, be encouraging of for the grantee but also others participating in the work is that there's this culture and practice of being open to trialling new things, 
for innovation and, if you like, noble failure. But I think the other element to balance that out when we're talking about innovation and, if you like, um, experimentation is to build in the accountability and the discipline and the rigour so that it's not unruly experimentation, but we're building again this culture and practice of continuous improvement and building in measurement and reflective practice so that we're actually using data to inform our future decision making and inform our improvement so that when we're talking about failure, it's in the context of um, moving forward. So it's a very interesting point because there's a lot of resource requirements around that whole equipping up of these initiatives around measurement around resourcing people to come together so that they can caucus. What's 1020's response to that sort of need for resourcing being yeah. in the context of these relationships? This is such an important point. We need to call this out really loudly because this is about creating conditions for um, good innovation and improvement. And I think if we just look at the business sector and acknowledge that um, the time and the money that went into building the right conditions for innovation through Pharma Labs and Silicon Valley and Innovation Labs, the sort of leadership governance, enabling technology capital that drove that innovation. Let's be real and acknowledge that if we're wanting to shift the system for early childhood in Australia, we also need to put these conditions in place for this sort of work. So, One of the other really fundamental um, aspects of this too is long-term funding. Yeah. Um, so funding cycles that are you know radically different to the normal type of funding cycles. Yeah. How has 1020 taken that into account in terms of its practice? So one of the greatest examples for us about how we've had to shift our practice is to shift our funding cycles. So traditionally um, philanthropy has done short term funding grants where we've stipulated the measures and we've been monitoring for um, success against those measures. What we've had to do is actually look at longer term funding cycles with more flexible funding and a lot of implications around that in terms of our practice. One is again coming back to the importance of the relationship with the grantee that we're participating in on a long term basis understanding the work so that we can see where the flex needs to be in the allocation. Another really important implication of working in this way is looking at our governance structures, how we manage risk and strategy. Uh, when we've got long investment horizons, the way we measure, the way we communicate with our board around those investments, we've had to shift our practice around that, which has been a really critical learning. So those things that I spoke about, Lizzie, are really all come back down to the importance of building trust in relationships, and this is where we're really going to start to see the shift in the system and the shift that we're looking for for vulnerable children. So this is why our practice and um, really challenging our practice and adapting our practice is really critical for us in getting results. Mm -hmm.